supporters there. And Democrats have a common opponent in President Trump, but are divided on just about everything else, what Democrats are for and what it means in 2018. No question, Democrats are fired up in united in opposition against President Trump, but they are deeply divided on what they are actually for, depending on the issue, evidenced by no less than six Democrats in a primary to take on one incumbent Republican congressman. Chris DeGaulle, radio host at WPHT in Philadelphia, available online as well, and nationally syndicated Progressive Voices radio host Mark Levine joins us. Uh, Mark wears another hat occasionally, Virginia House of Delegates. I think that's the pin on your jacket, that's sir. Correct. All right, Mark, uh, start, start with you. Do Democrats need to at least spend 50% of their time on presenting a vision, or is the party of no opposition to President Trump a good strategy? Oh, I think Democrats uh, have always put forth a vision, and we need to make that very clear. I mean, we, we, have, we support affordable health care. We support raising minimum wage. We support paid family medical leave. We support making college more affordable. Okay, but, we, but take, but take health care, Mark. You, yeah. you've, got all the, you've got all the way from sort of uh, the Joe Manchin types who say, yeah, I can sign, sign on to a possible uh, fix of Obamacare to Bernie Sanders who says, I want single payer. That doesn't sound very united to me. Well, I think we agree on the same vision. We agree that any American who c should be able to get treatable health care, even if they can't afford it. What we disagree is on the mechanism for paying for it. Some of us would, would modify the Affordable Care Act. Other of us would go more to the European model of Medicare for all. And we do have some disagreements on that. But the basic idea that if you need health care, you should be able to get it at an affordable cost, we all agree on that. We all agree that drug uh, prices should be cheaper Devil and the president sh should negotiate them down. Uh, Republicans disagree with us on that. So De Devil's, Devil's in the detail. Uh, Chris, is this something that Republicans are beginning to exploit? On the flip side, if Democrats do get united around a single voice and rallying cry, is that something for Republicans to worry about? Oh, well, I, I suppose, but that's a big if, and that's a long ways away. I mean, you just saw in this last election cycle, there can be no doubt that the two most disruptive forces in our politics were Trump and uh, Sanders, not Mrs. Clinton. Mrs. Clinton was soundly and roundly rejected. And even as you look at those drop-off Obama voters who voted for Trump, it was all about Mrs. Clinton. That nomination was a, a colossal mistake. The, ins the excitement, the enthusiasm, unfortunately, was around Bernie Sanders. Should that take hold? Yeah, Republicans ought to look out, but I'm not convinced they're there yet. Uh, Mark, to that point, I, I went down to the DNC in Atlanta, and the, the DNC for its past uh, few months has been uh, admittedly in disarray. Tom Perez having a difficult time sort of hurting the cats on this. But every panel, every forum down there was identity politics. And you uh, listen to the Virginia governor's race that's coming up, uh, the Democratic candidate there. It's all about identity politics. Actually, you I've heard very little identity politics from Ralph Northam. He's talking about jobs. He's talking about making college more affordable. He's talking about health care. He's talking about opposing so, Donald so is Trump that the new, on so the is that the new So is that the new strategy in your mind? I think Democrats care about civil rights for all Americans and care about equal opportunity for all Americans. It's not either or, it's both and. But, but, but is civil rights different than identity politics? Uh, I mean, I don't, no. identity politics is your word. We support equal rights for all. Whether you are black or white, mm. whatever religion, whatever sexual orientation, whatever national origin, we believe in equal rights for all. Some people call that identity politics. I just call that protection, equal protection under the laws. Chris? Nobody thinks uh, equal rights are the preeminent problem of the day. What everybody's concerned about is the economy and moving the economy forward. And continuously, we're talking about everything from, from, from kneeling to, to uh, the, the, the knitted pink hats on the mall to uh, equal rights. I mean, not that these things under themselves wouldn't be great to discuss, but that's not what this election was about. We're talking about the economy. And I'm not hearing Democrats talk about it. They just yeah. won't. You know, I, I think sexual harassment matters. I think black lives matter. I think that a lot of people care about innocent black men being shot by police as well as caring well, about equal opportunity. Uh, in, in the very in the late last election to unseat an incumbent president, it was James Carville who uh, coined the line, it's the economy stupid. So we'll see if that uh, yep. com comes back around here. Uh, economy doing pretty well, as the president pointed out. GDP now 3% growth. We need to help uh, rural America better. All right. Well, I, I, there's, a lot, there's a lot of people who are saying that, the president as well. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Leland. All Thank right. you, Leland. Disarray, not just